Hi, it's Babette from Digital Noir here. I'm just going to go over how to add a product to your WordPress website. It's really similar to adding a new post or page, um, but there's a little bit more information that you will need to add in specifically about your product. So if you go to the left hand side and click on products, you can do it that way by clicking add product, or you can go to the top where it says add new and click on product. As you can see, the add new product page looks pretty much like the add new post page. You can enter a title or a product name, you can enter the product description, um, you have the product categories, the product tags a little bit further down, and then you have the product data. And this is where you would enter all the information about your product. You also have the product gallery. A featured image and at the very bottom you have the product short description. So the first thing we're going to want to do is put in a title for our product. So let's just put in a generic title for a product. Then we might want to put in a short description about the hooded jumper. Okay then we may want to upload an image of the product as well. But before we do that, we'll go ahead and we'll put it under a category. We can even add in a new category and then make it sit underneath another category as a parent. All you do is add in, the, add in the jumper and then put it under jackets and then add new category. It's also handy to add in product tags so if we were to say hoodie jumper grey Keep them relatively succinct and to the point, and that way it will be easier for people to find the product. Then we can move on to putting in the pictures. If we only have one image, you're probably best off just setting a featured image. You do need to set a featured image for each one, but if you want to add in more, you can always add more to the product gallery. So let's put in our featured image. Once that's done, we just want to pop in a title. It will default to being the name of the image that you have uploaded. So if you have an image that is a code or a number, you're most likely going to want to change that to be a little bit more descriptive. Grey hoodie is fine for now. If you want to add in a caption, that's probably not necessary for uploading a product image as that actually adds a caption to the image. Um, but you will want to add in some alternative text. Alternative text is handy because it means that the Google bots that do the searching through the internet will see the picture as words and then read the words for the search. So if you have a vague alternative text, it's not going to be able to find it. So let's go grey hoodie for the alternative text. Say we want to add in additional images. We can do that by going to the product library, sorry, the product gallery, and clicking add product gallery images. 
Then we simply upload the files the same way that we did for the feature image. In this scenario, we don't necessarily need more than one. It's a pretty straightforward jumper. Another thing you may like to do for your product is add in a short description as well. In this scenario, we'll just use the same description because it's a relatively short one anyhow. But I just thought I'd touch on that because I just wanted to mention if you are going to copy and paste things in from emails or from Word documents, because a lot of the time you will have all of this information already on hand, it's just a matter of uploading it into the site, you don't want to just paste it straight in from those programs. You want to first paste them into something like a text, a text editor like text editor on a Mac or, or notepad on a Windows computer. Because if you do paste in something from an email or from a Word document, you're likely that it will already have formatting on there. So you're going to have complications when it's up on the site, it won't look quite right. So just for safety's sake, always paste anything that you're going to paste into WordPress into a text editor first, just so it can strip off the formatting on it. So obviously we're going to want to put in the information about the product itself as well. So if we go to product data, this is where we would add in the, the specific information about that product. So the SKU number would be the barcode number or the identification number of the product. That's something you would most likely have on hand already and you just pop that in there so that you have that available for your searching and for your clients. So as you can see there, if you hover above the question mark, it will say SKU refers to a stock keeping unit, a unique identifier for each distinct product and a service that can be purchased. In there, we've also got the regular price. So you can pop in a regular price of $59.95, for example. And then we may want to have a sale price of $49.95. The good thing about this is that you can actually schedule the sale. So you may want the scheduled sale to run from the 31st of March until the 10th of April and then that will run from within those specific dates which saves you from having to remember to go in and pop on a sale every now and again. You can actually schedule it in advance once you're already in there. Let's have a little bit of a deeper look into the product data section. There's some things you may not actually ever need to use in the product data section. For example, you may not be selling a service, so therefore you won't need the virtual tick box. You may not be providing your, serve, your product to be downloadable, so therefore you don't need the downloadable box. You may actually just be selling physical items. But if you're not selling physical items and you are selling a service, tick this one and the shipping options will disappear. And downloadable as well will give you different options and it will ask, ask you to add in the files, the product type, the download expiry, and how many limits they have for downloading. The tab underneath general, inventory, gives you the ability to manage the stock for the individual item. I think this is a really easy way to manage your stock. So you can actually tick enable stock management at the product level where you can manually type in how many you have in stock. You also have other options where you'll be able to allow customers to do back orders. This is something that's really up to you as the shop manager. You can allow a customer to do a back order, but you may want to notify them that it is a back order and that they, that they are not currently in stock, which is probably a good idea or you can just allow back orders. It depends on how often you're going to receive the stock in and how long the customer is going to be waiting for the stock to arrive. You've also got 
the manual in stock, out of stock status there as well. Underneath inventory, you've got your shipping details where you enter in the weight, the dimensions and the shipping class for your item. We've got upsells and cross sells. Upsells is something where you may say, okay, well, you may want the standard version of this product, but did you know that this version also comes as a higher version where you can buy it with an additional belt that comes with it? Something like that. Cross sells, you can say, oh, I see you bought a backpack. Do you want to buy a pencil case to put inside your backpack? That kind of thing. It depends on the type of product that you're selling. Then we have attributes. This comes in handy when we're doing variable products. So a variable product is something that's going to come in a variety. So you could have a grey jumper or you could have the same jumper in blue and also the same jumper in black. So what we would do then is go, okay, it's a variable product and we're going to need to add in the different attributes of that product. So what we're going to want to do is add in different attributes. So let's add a new one. Let's name the value of this, sorry, let's name this attribute size and we'll say that the jumper comes in small medium and large. When you're putting in the values just be sure to separate them with this little pipe symbol and then we add uh, save that one. If we want to add another one simply click add and we might want to add in the different colors that it comes in. So what did we say? We said it might come in grey blue and black. We save those attributes. Once we've added in what the values are for our attributes, we want to click used for variations on those. You'll notice that when we dropped down to variable product, it gave us the option in the tab side to click on variations before that wasn't there. So if we went back to sync product, variations would disappear. It's important for us to add attributes before we have any chance of adding any variations because they're not going to be able to categorize what variations we have if we don't have any attributes for the variations. For example, the attributes of the size and color, but we're not going to know that one of those variations are a small jumper in black if we don't know what the size and colours are. So we need to put in the attributes first and they'll make you do that before you add in your variations. They won't allow you to add any because it's not possible. So we have the option of adding variation manually or we can link all variations and that will go through and pull all the attributes out and make the variations for us. In this case, we had three colors and three sizes, so therefore we're gonna have nine different versions. We're going to click link all variations. It's going to confirm with us. Do we want to link all the variations? This will create a new variation for each and every possible combination of variation attributes. That's a maximum of 50 per run. So we've only got nine, that's fine. Click okay, it'll mull it over. nine variations have been added. Okay. And there we have it. We've got small grey, medium grey, large grey, and it will do the same for each colour that we had in there as well. Then we can go through and we can put different prices depending on the size, the colour, 
it may be something where you charge more for a larger one. For example, if you had sheet sets on sale, you may charge more for a king than a small. That's where this comes in really handy. And then you also do the individual stock status for that. You can also put in your shipping details. And if you're doing a downloadable item, you would put in your download limit and download expiry details. There's a lot of information to input here, but all of it makes it easy for your customer to find the products that they want. And it makes it easier for you as the manager of the shop to manage your products and your customers.